some analysis on the situation in Israel and the Palestinian territories. Bernard Avishi is a professor at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire and a contributor to the New Yorker magazine. Hello, Bernard. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, Israel's promise to maintain the status quo at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Is this going to be enough to ease the tensions? Well, I suppose that depends on whether the tensions are seen merely as a response to what's been happening on the Haram al-Sharif or Temple Mount. Um, I'm hoping, of course, that uh, young people will take this as a signal that um, we should really cool the tensions. But I think right from the beginning, one had to make a distinction between the proximate cause of the tension and the larger material cause of the tension. The proximate cause has been uh, uncertainty about the fate of the Temple Mount and the fear that some members of the Netanyahu government were agitating to change the status quo and give more access to uh, Jews. Um, but there's a larger material cause in Jerusalem that has to do with uh, 40 years of occupation, that has to do with the um, sense of frustration that both sides are feeling now with regard to the collapse of any peace process. And um, there's also young people, new generation, young people who have come up, who uh, you know, are under 20 years old, who don't remember the Al-Aqsa Intifada of 2000, and uh, for whom um, life is a long, uh, you know, a long period of watching parents go off to rather menial jobs and having uh, a huge unemployment rate. The dropout rate among the oldest high school students in Jerusalem is 40% and the unemployment rate for men in Jerusalem is 40%. Uh, so irrespective of the immediate causes, there's a tremendous amount of frustration and also frustration with the Palestine Authority, which has, uh, I think, very appropriately been calling for nonviolent diplomatic change so, uh, for Professor, many years and hasn't produced much. Professor Avishai, the crisis over the Alexa was just the, the tip, that was just the spark. I mean, where do they, where do we go from here and, and what hope is there for a, a solution and a peaceful one at that? Well, there is always hope that you can revive some kind of peace process where the end goal is a two-state solution with a certain amount of confederal structures, because such a small place, it's almost impossible to imagine dividing the line like two Japans, you know. But, but uh, that requires a measure of intention on each side. I think Kerry understands that the two sides will never be able to get together because their right wings, their, their, their uh, fanatic wings are simply too powerful to allow the center, the small majorities on each side, which I would like to call the center, to come together. It's very hard for them to come together when they have such rejectionist wings that are so powerful. You need to have some kind of international help. You need to have mediation, you need to have goodwill, and you need to give some sense of uh, 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 diplomatic momentum so that the more moderate forces on each side of the line can get some kind of uh, reasonable um, uh, uh, argument to make to the population. Professor Avishai, um, thank you very much for that. Uh, Professor Bernard Avishai uh, joins us there from Dartmouth. Thank you very much for that, sir.